Hello, welcome back to Blender CC Live. In this episode, I want to talk about this add-on called um, Blender for Feather. So it's actually um, an add-on from Studio Aileron, and this studio is the one that brought the Feather 3D app. So this app works as a web app or as an app that lives inside iPad. So the idea is really you are scribbling just like using grease pencil. Um, it's very intuitive and it's really almost everything that I want from Blender Grease Pencil to work inside iPad. There's a couple of things that's actually a little bit better here, but the Grease Pencil has few things like connecting strokes and just, uh, but this <clears throat> in terms of uh, functionality, it's almost what I really want from uh, Grease Pencil. So it's very similar workflow. So this add-on, this Blender add-on actually allowing you to modify and edit uh, the 3D mesh coming out from Feather and making things uh, very clean uh, as I want to show you. So this add-on, uh, it's going to look like this. So it's basically allowing you to join curves based on the same color material, for example, and then you can quickly decimate it. You can quickly remesh, change the color and brightness if you want to. So you can darken the color very quickly, change the alpha if you want to, and then you know turn it into just emission or like shade it. It's kind of flipping, flipping the two. And there's also this really cool tool, extract the curve from the mesh. So I will show you the whole process. Let me show you. So first of all, we need to get the OBJ out from the app itself. I already have it here. So this is the the snake artwork that I created inside Feather. Um, it looks kind of messy and if we and every, every strokes at the moment is separate and it's just a bunch of curve. It's actually a mesh and it's not a curve objects, right? So the add-on, once you install the add-on, I'm using Blender 4.2 and make sure you install this Blender 4 Feather. There's another one, multi-material. I will probably just talk about this one first for now. We can, first of all, what I like to do, uh, we can actually join by material or by the group, but I like to do extract, extract curve from the mesh. As you might already, you might notice that when you are using Feather, it's all just bunch of curve, just like Grease Pencil. <clears throat> when you are doing Grease Pencil, you can convert the Grease Pencil into curve, and this is exactly what it does. But it's really, really cool because it's converting from mesh back into kind of like a curve stroke. So now we, we only get curve. It's no longer mesh. But with the curve geometry, uh, remember you can you can play around with the depth and give some kind of thickness. You can actually use geometry nodes to randomize uh, this depth as well. Or you just play, if you want to play around with extrude, you can. If we hold options and fill the caps, it's gonna you know it's gonna cover and close the curve and points okay so we need to do that because now I want to show you so there are now a curve and it's already bevel if I convert this into mesh now there are mesh objects we can actually group by material so join them by material and now every material is connected and if we change the shading you can see if I select this material for, ex for example the green one I can quickly change the color and also I can do like a quick remesh so instead of just curve I remesh it and turn it into some kind of just mesh objects that I can export so it's become really clean if you want to decimate select all and just decimate it it's just gonna work and then brighten and darken also will work so 
yeah, that's really cool, simple tools uh, that you can use. I'm really excited about this because why? Uh, once you clean up and then adjust the color, it become possible. You can just export it as USDZ and then you can look at it as AR or inside the VR, like inside Apple Vision Pro, things like that. Um, if I want to display the whole process, like, I mean, I could share my iPad view at the moment. So this is my iPad view currently being displayed on the Mac OS, right? I could mirror my Apple Vision Pro view into the iPad, but yes, maybe that's for the next one. So this is how it looks at first, right? This is inside Feather 3D app, and then I draw this snake looking things. I can show you the process just to give you the idea. So it's just, uh, like I said, it's just a bunch of stroke, just like inside Grease Pencil. There is a, there is a bit of learning curve, but once you get it, it's just a lot of fun. So in order to draw inside Feather 3D app, we either use, we need to first draw the reference surface. So if I go to the top view and I draw some, like a curve like that, that's actually gonna draw like a, like a canvas, like a reference points. So you can, you can draw a snake for example. So if I want, I wanna use this uh, different stroke, which I think a little bit cleaner. So I draw this snake. So this snake's like a like a rainbow snake, probably like in Aboriginal painting. We often see this kind of snake, <laughs> very basic one. But you can then colorize the snake with random color. Just quick one, but it's really basic, like I said. But it's it's a lot of fun, very expressive. Because it's just like grease pencil. You can draw, you know, like something like that. Um, and you can just erase, you know, and you get the snake in 3D space, basically. You can try using the lofting or... Um, let me show you. If we actually start again, like I will draw like maybe like a, something like that. So you draw the reference canvas like that. And then if I use this tool on the top right, you see I'm tapping there. I can make this curvy like that. So it's like uh, extruding a long path. After I do that, we can start doodling on top of this canvas. Oh, I mean on top of this reference surface which is really already cooler as well so uh let me actually don't do that i will just draw simple stroke like that because i want to show you another thing now i delete that canvas again we left out with the strokes floating but we can do lofting Lofting is cool. Another cool tools. You just draw and it's gonna loft surface on top of that. In 3D, that's quite common. But so basically strokes can be lofted. Um, what's cool, of course, this stroke can be easily moved around. So I move around the strokes in 3D space using this controller over here on the bottom right and I could even rotate things like that I could change the functions of this joystick I think this this is really cool interface from Feather 3D very very handy and like I said we can just loft it imagine like a ribbon floating in 3D space we basically just draw that okay so done, hit done. So we can actually now start painting on top of this 
um, I feel like I I didn't I delete the stroke like that, but I I now I switch to the actual painting tools. If I want to draw like a spiral like this, I can do that. We can rotate around in 3D space. So I've done this in Apple Vision Pro, of course. In Apple Vision Pro, everything is basically like 3D space. And you can just doodle like a, in spatial, you know, like a, you can draw things in 3D space. It's just like, imagine like drawing ribbon on air and the ribbon will stay. I found that really, really fun and cool. It's very in intuitive. However, um, it might be a little bit hard to get to them. Um, if you're working with a, like on a screen, on the iPad screen, like what I'm doing here, It seems to be easier to manage. And you don't have to be in that kind of spatial environment all the time. It's good to be, you know, like to be able to just switch to this mode time to time again. Okay, so I just draw things in the ribbon on the ribbon. I can delete the canvas now. It's, they are now floating in 3D space, right? Okay. I just, because this is just for quick demonstrations. Now I want to switch to select tool and I'm selecting everything. What I will do since we are in this mode, you know, we can rotate the snake, right? Just duplicate it and then rotate it. So I'm making like a quite an abstract looking art. It's quite easy to do this. Duplicate one more time. Yeah, okay. So we have a bunch of strokes with different color floating in 3D space. What do we do next? Export into OBJ. Don't use GLTF. Use OBJ in order for this to work. If you use GLTF, it's gonna, it might actually gonna fail. So I'm just gonna send it to my Mac Mini. So I will just now stop mirroring. So back to this space. So let's see if this actually works now. File, import. OBJ downloads. Now we have our objects. A little bit messy and they are all just a bunch of mesh. Use our add-on. Select everything, just extract extract them into strokes. After we do this, we can actually just convert it into grease pencil which is another thing, really cool. Maybe for the next video. In this case, I just wanna play around with this, change the resolution. So I can make it really thick or not. Anyway, I just feel the cap, maybe change the resolution to two join material by join curve by material i can convert them into mesh object remesh them so if i want to send it to apple vision pro or usdz this is actually gonna work instant like instantly and uh yeah we can decimate so it's a little bit lower resolution we can do decimate a couple of times. 
if we want to change the material color we can brighten and darken as we like Select all, right click, shade smooth. So they are pretty clean, you know, just bunch of strokes. Um, they are also, because they are 3D objects in, in Blender, you can go to sculpt mode and you can use the cloth filter, inflate. I do this time to time again. Because, uh, I don't know, I, I like the, the cloth simulations and then, you know. Anything that you can do inside Blender, you can do because now it's becoming 3D mesh inside Blender and you can sculpt it, things like that. So sculpt mode also, of course, have mesh filter and then you can deflate. So inflate and deflate. As you wish. So that's basically what I want to show you. It's pretty, pretty basic, I think, but very powerful. Um, in fact, if you are actually spending some time inside Feather Three D and then starting to kind of work inside it, uh, it feels that it's. It can be like another workflow because you can you can like a, like a draw imagine them like a like a st grease pencil stroke but you can also you know like, like draw things like like this car for example sketching the cars into it it's very intuitive once you get to understand the whole process and See, whatever color you have, it can be like a real mesh. You can join them by the material color. And then once it's become real mesh, you can then tidy up uh, the mesh inside Blender. Just re-sculpt it or things like that. This one actually will work really well. Um, yeah, I might just export it as... Um, 3D objects, OBJ export, and drop it into my Mac Mini. Hopefully, I get it. Let's stop the mirroring. Show in Finder, extract it. File new. File new. General. File, import, OBJ. So this guy over here, just gonna extract into curve. This might take a while, it's quite large. Yeah, but you know the drill, it's just like turning mesh back into curve. You can then convert it into grease pencil if you want to, and then modify the grease pencil stroke. And then using the same material, just convert it back into mesh. You can reduce the decimate. You can join the curve by the material color, so you can modify it more, more easily. Uh, but I think, yeah, I'll just continue working and I'm gonna stop here and maybe I'll make video Showing the whole process again, but just, you know, actually making uh, 3D things using Feather and then convert it into Grease Pencil and then so on and so on. So hopefully you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.